Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to be walking you through how to clean your system from a hardware ID man. Hey, well, we're going to have to stop it right there for a quick second. All right, guys, just to make sure we're clear, quick service announcement. To maintain compliance with YouTube's terms of service, the content provided in this video is for educational, documentary, and research purposes only. This content is protected as fair use under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. You are not being encouraged to use these tools, methods, or techniques. Now let's get back into the video. We're gonna be using the Golden Gun Cleaner. In the recent day, we have discovered that uh, every new fresh account we create allows us to get our first game in, and then of course, trying to jump into our second game, we're getting uh, immediately shot up to you know, 117, 217, 350. So we're getting up to 350 milliseconds. Um, that is typically uh, a shadow ban. Uh, but when it happens on multiple accounts, when you create multiple fresh new accounts, you know, two or three of these in a row, and you get the first game to be successful and the second game is a shadow ban, even without using any hacks or tools, this is, in effect, a hardware ID ban. So I'm going to show you how to get through that. Um, what we've done is we've gone up to, uh, and let's go ahead and bring this down here. Uh, we're going to go into our uh, Golden Gun Cheats. We're going to jump into our uh, Golden Gun folder here. We're going to right-click and run the Golden Gun Cleaner. Now, this comes down as part of, when you download the cheats in general, you get a zip file. The zip file contains both of these items. So we're going to go ahead and run as administrator. Uh, this is a normal message, normal warning that you're supposed to get. Remember, these are unsigned, unknown publishers, right? They're unsigned executables. And because of that, Windows puts up a warning and says, hey, we don't know who made that, so you might want to reconsider running it. We're going to hit, of course, run anyway. Uh, <clears throat> there's our golden gun uh, cleaner. I'm going to move this out of the way just for convenience. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my license key. I'm going to take a copy of that. I'm going to stretch this out to be a little bit larger so we can kind of see all the good stuff that's going to happen. I'm going to put my key there. And again, my key as a VIP member uh, has already been assigned to this particular device. Uh, so if you, um, if I, I'm going to obfuscate uh, that license key, but if you do manage to find uh, a readable uh, single screenshot of it or something, uh, I can personally tell you that it's never going to work for you, so don't bother trying. They already know that I make these videos, for. <laughs> so they've already kind of, you know, they're aware. All right, it's going to validate the key. It's going to show I got five days, 10 hours, 46 minutes left. Uh, typically, what I recommend for most people that are new to uh, removing hardware ID bands is just simply to use the option zero, right? Just click zero. It'll run through steps one, two, three, four, five, and six. Automatically, it'll create everything for you and do all the business. Uh, a critical part of this is to make sure that you do create a new Windows user. The security ID, otherwise known as the SID, <clears throat> of the user account, every object in the computer has a SID, and the user account SID, the security ID for the user, is recorded uh, as part of your hardware profile. So if you're using, uh, if you just do the steps manually and don't use uh, a new Windows account, uh, you will be entirely unsuccessful in this process. For this exercise, however, in order to showcase all of the steps that are happening one by one, I'm going to run through each of these uh, steps manually, and then I'm going to create the new Windows user myself. So again, for new people that are new to this, hit zero, fly through it. It'll give you a username and a password. You can change the password later, uh, that sort of thing. In my case, I'm going to go through it one by one and create my new user account in Windows myself. So let's go ahead and clean the trace files uh, for all the important bits. It's going to ask us where Call of Duty Modern Warfare is installed. Make sure to read up here. It says, you know, generally located here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see if it is, right, under program x86. And then we're going to look for Modern Warfare. You'll notice that we don't see it here. And that's because when I did the install of the game, I actually put it on my secondary volume. So you'll find that uh, under Games, 
and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So I have a different location for my installation. Yours could be in the default path, or it might be in a different location if you installed it somewhere else. I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. It's going to ask me for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And while I don't have Black Ops Cold War, I'm still going to point it back to the same folder. Okay? It's not a necessity. You could technically hit cancel. It's going to go through and it's going to delete all kinds of trace files and crash dumps and other things. And boom, that's successful. The next step I'm going to take is number two, where I am going to, uh, down here in the menu, just change my hardware ID. Now, we've gone through some of this in another video, uh, and we're going to republish that video again. But this is the uh, these are the AMI tools that are being used. It only works uh, when you have an AMI BIOS. Okay, If you're using a BIOS that comes from a manufacturer like Dell or HP or IBM, these functions are generally unavailable. Uh, so you'll see that in my case, uh, random strings have been generated for most all of these items. <clears throat> if you are using one of those workstations by a manufacturer like Dell, IBM, or HP, you'll find that this process could be more difficult than, than originally sought after. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit number two again just to show that process over, and you'll see that it's developing and showing that I've got different uh, IDs and serial numbers across things like the UUID, baseboard, uh, system serial numbers. All of those things have been regenerated into the random strings that you see here. Okay. Uh, once that part is done, I'm going to go ahead and change my MAC address, which is number three. Now, important on the MAC address piece, let's go into the control panel really quick and sort of take a look at our networking uh, configuration. So let me get in there. I'm a little bit off screen at the moment just while I pull stuff up. Change adapter settings. All right. So you can see that I have quite a few things going on, right? So I've got some virtual box. I've got some VMware virtual adapters. I've got a VPN, some Bluetooth. I've got all kinds of things going. Many people will tell you that you absolutely have to have just one network adapter. I find that that is the case as well, but only in certain circumstances. In this case, it's going to be the primary Ethernet. You'll see the rest of these are all disabled. So my Wi-Fi is disabled. My secondary Wi-Fi is disabled. Um, I do utilize Bluetooth, although I've got it switched off. Um, my, uh, my VPN, it's going to stay here. I'm still going to use it. My VMware network adapter, uh, you know, VMware Net 1 and VMware Net 8. So I'm going to go ahead and change the MAC addresses to those. I'm just going to leave this up in the background while we do that. So again, we're going to use number three and change our MAC IDs. <clears throat> and there we go. You can see all of the adapters that are active are the adapters that have been changed. Okay. Uh, with one exception, the NordVPN tunnel, which is not really a network connection to begin with, but um, it's just a, it's a different kind of connection, uh, which I'm, I'm not going to go into. Uh, so on the, so you can see the old MAC address here, A0AD9, and you can see the new random one, A3B1. Now remember, these changes are permanent, okay? The same thing with the serial numbers up here. These changes are permanent. They do not revert back to their original self when you reboot your system, okay? They will stay changed forever. So in the unlikely event that you're one of those people that does MAC address filtering elsewhere in your network, you'll need to make the appropriated adjustments. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is change our serial number IDs on our hard drives. This is one of those moments where um, people generally get a little nervous because, oh my goodness, if I change my serial number and on my, uh, on my hardware, on, on my disk drive, am I still going to be able to get access to the data that's there? The answer is yes. You're going to be just fine. So we're going to go ahead and change the volume ID of those two, and we're going to go through that actually a couple times to show you that it in fact does change. You can see the hardware ID changed it to CDA3, and down here it's 5E5C. So it is randomizing in the same type of alphanumeric structure that we had before. Uh, the last step, of course, is to create a new Windows user and then reboot the PC. I'm actually going to do those steps manually. I'm going to walk you through how to do that uh, if you've never done it before. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to pause this video for a moment. I have to log in into a different account, my main account on this hardware, and that will give me the ability to delete the account I'm currently logged in as and logged in as a new and log in with a new user. So I will be right back.
All right, everybody, freshly back after the log off and log in. Again, in the first section of this video, I was logged into my workstation here, my gaming rig, as the Warzone hacker. Because I'm going to be removing that account and deleting it uh, and rebuilding a new one, uh, I need to log in as a different user. So I have more than one on the workstation here on the gaming rig. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at how that is configured and set up. If I open up a uh, quick command prompt window uh, and I just type in version, I'm going to re reiterate, uh, this is the 21H1 version of Windows, the most current with all of the, all the fixings and all the updates. Uh, if I do a quick host name, I'm going to show you that I'm on Viper 03, right? Same PC we've been using, same gaming rig we've been using uh, for the last couple of videos. If I use the who am I command, you'll see that I'm currently logged in as Michael. That's me. Uh, and everyone knows that. So uh, nothing to change there. So we'll exit out of that just for uh, the get that out of the way. I'm going to right click on the start menu and head up to computer management. Uh, inside of computer management, I'm simply going to go to the local users and groups. And then I'm going to go to users. And what you'll see here is that I've got multiple accounts, some that come with Windows by default, some that don't. So I'll walk you through it. This administrator account comes with Windows and is generally disabled by design. When you installed Windows uh, 10 Pro, you would have created a user during the installation, uh, leaving this one in a disabled state. I typically leave that disabled because it's known to be uh, sort of suspect for uh, brute force type attacks and other rats and things you might find uh, throughout the internet. The default account and guest are also always disabled by default. Uh, and if you have any kind of a utility account, uh, this would also and should be disabled by default. The only two that are active, of course, is Michael. That's my original account on the device. And Michael then created an account called Warzone Hacker. Uh, the Warzone Hacker is currently a member of the local administrators group. That means he's got full access to the entire machine and he can administer anything in the device. Uh, we want to use the same name. So in order to do that, um, we're going to delete this account, clean up after it, and then we're going to uh, create a new account with the same name. Now, even though you create identical accounts with same names, they will always have unique identifiable SID values. Uh, Microsoft never allows a SID to be used more than once. So you, a new SID will be generated just by going ahead and creating a new account, even if I'm using the same name. All right, so in order to do that, the first thing we wanna do is get down here. We want to go into our old-fashioned control panel simply by searching and typing in control. Head over to system, and I will bring that about. Here's our system. And where we're going to go here is into the advanced system settings. Once that pulls up, I'm going to go to the advanced tab, and I'm going to go to user profiles. And you'll see that the user profile for the Warzone hacker is probably quite large. Okay. Uh, and it is. So it's six and a half gigabytes worth of uh, data in there. Now, I know that the Warzone hacker has many things uh, that that account has been a part of, creating videos, doing all kinds of stuff. However, all of that data, all the important data for me, has all been stored not inside the user's account, so not in the My Documents folder for the user, but on a separate drive right? And into separate folders. So although the account might be large, nothing that I've done within the account is um, justification for keeping it around. There's no reason for me to have it. I can simply delete it uh, and move forward. So we're going to just simply double check that. Do, 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 off screen for just a minute. Yep, there's nothing in the account that we need to worry about. So we're going to go ahead and highlight it, and we're going to hit delete. That's going to take a minute and delete six and a half gigs worth of trash data. Once that's done, then we're going to be able to go into the users and computers and delete the actual account from Windows itself. This might take a minute because it is quite large. And as I'm sure you'll see, the disk is working. Uh, if we right-click on our taskbar and go into performance, uh, if we switch over to this, you'll see the disk is probably working quite hard. There's a hard, solid, regular hard drive. 
and this one's a solid state drive. It doesn't show that it's working hard at all, actually. Oh, because it's done. Okay. Yep, so it finished up. Uh, it would have tanked out the hard drive at 100% for a few brief moments. Uh, then it finished up, and it's done. So now that account uh, is has all of its data removed. And what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the account from the system simply by right-clicking it and hitting delete. Yep. And it says each unique identifier in addition to the blah, 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 blah. It deletes the identifier and it cannot be restored. Yep. See you later. You're about to delete an administrative account. Yep. We know that. See you later. So now that's done. So now in order to create a new user, again, you can use the Golden Gun Cleaner to sort of do it for you. I particularly like to do this myself. Um, so let's go make a new account. There we go. We're going to go ahead and give it a password. We're not going to require any password changes at the first login, uh, but we're going to set the password to never expire. And there we go. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I'm going to call this Warzone Hacker. <clears throat> like that. I'm going to go ahead and go into members of, I'm going to click add. I'm going to type in administrators, plural, more than one. Hit check names, go ahead and hit okay, and apply those changes. So now essentially what I've done is created a brand new user account on the system that affords me the ability now to reboot, which puts all of the serial number changes I've made into effect. And when the machine comes back up, I'm going to log in as this brand new account. You'll find that everything needs to be set up from scratch. Wallpaper, desktop icons, the whole business. All of it will need to be redone, which is not a big deal um, because we're only using that account for a few small things like video creation and, you know, hacking Call of Duty. Now, remember, my cheats are in my build folder and all of my videos are on my secondary archive volume. So everything that I really need that's important to me and this account have all been sort of isolated and segmented away from the account itself. All right, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and restart, and we're going to bring ourselves logging into that account. We'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So here's what kind of the login looks like after, <laughs> after a fresh start. Well, it's very empty in here and very barren. Uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to go, unfortunately, you're going to have to kind of go through a lot of the first time run, you know, maybe even re-register some software or go get some license codes. You know, that's normal behavior for this kind of an event. Um, in particular, um, over here in my recording software, uh, this is the Radeon uh, software that you get, you know, when you have Radeon uh, graphics cards. Under the settings, I have to go through and turn on all of my record and stream settings. I will eventually change my uh, media save location once I'm done making this video. Little things like that are going to pop up all over the place. Well, let's quickly uh, just kind of open a command prompt. Um, We'll back it up, change colors really quick. For those of you who like to change colors, um, you know, there is a bunch of color options available. Um, anyway, uh, just a quick host name, still on Viper Viper 3. You know, obviously you saw it already, but the, the Who Am I shows the Warzone hacker. Uh, you know, we can exit out of that. Uh, the next thing we're going to say is, oh, this desktop, it's horrible. All right, so we're going to jump into our uh, folders. Let's go into our build folder. We're going to go into our war zone hacking stuff. Uh, let's go to um, YouTube videos, our YouTube images, and uh, let's grab ourselves a background that we know and love. Uh, there we go. We kind of like that. So we're going to right click on that and set as the desktop background for now. Oh, I feel much better. Now I feel like a hacker again. I'm kidding. Uh, we're going to get so, rid of some of these items down here from the taskbar. We've already moved. Uh, we've already moved uh, this series of icons. You know, we've moved them over and uh, out of the way off screen. Uh, and we will keep our video recording software up there in the tippy top. And we are sort of ready to get started. Uh, a couple of things. Um, close out of OneDrive. We will turn that off. Uh, get a couple of 
alerts here from the security center, these are actually totally normal, right? Um, it wants me to set up OneDrive so that I automatically back up my files in case there's a virus or some kind of threat. Um, I know what I'm doing. I don't need this. Dismiss. Um, it wants me to sign in with a Microsoft account for enhanced security and other benefits. No, thank you. It wants me to turn on app and browser control to stop potentially unwanted applications that might make my device vulnerable. Um, I'm hacking here. Think not. Uh, all right. Now that that stuff's all done, uh, we're going to jump right in to our C drive. <clears throat> we're going to launch Battle.net. Actually, we should probably make our fresh account first. Yeah, we're going to make our freshie first. So, do, 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 do. we have to go through the first time run for many of these uh, things. So, the browser is the next one we got to go through. Yes, continue without signing in, please. Thank you. Don't really care. Close, open. Just take me to the home page. All right, so mail.tm. There's our new mailbox. Okay. And text verified. Was it dot com? Yeah. Textverified.com, and we will sign into that in a moment. And of course, um, uh, Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Make a new account. My account, create a free account. Okay. We are pretty much ready to make a freshie. Now, I'm going to take this off screen for a minute, the text verified one, because I do have to log in and I am going to use some personal data to do that. And I don't want you seeing that personal data. So I am not a robot. Crosswalks. Verify more crosswalks. All right, we're good. Remember me, log in, save for next time. And now we can bring that back. Okay, perfect. So we have our disposable and temporary email box. We've got our text verification. I'm down to a buck 25 in my account. I had to read, I had to put some more money in there. Uh, and of course, Battle.net. So let's go make a fresh E. We're going to open up a notepad document. And let's get crack a -lack in. I will move this off screen for just a moment. I'm going to take a copy of that email address. Let's go ahead and verify text SMS, Blizzard, and there's our phone number, and we're going to paste that as well. All right, 0320, whoa, number pad, hello, number pad, 03261984. Continue. What is your name? My name will be what? Agent Darkness. Sounds pretty cool. All right, we're going to slap in our email address like so, and the phone number like so. Boom, we're off to the races. There's our code, and we're going to paste our code right there. Continue. Tick a box. Continue. Give ourselves a password. Boom, and... <sighs> that looks good enough. Uh, we're never going to save that. We're going to go into account settings as we usually do. We're going to resend the verification email. We're going to wait patiently. There they are. And we're going to click on that. We're going to go back to email, back to the inbox, click on the second one, verify now. We're at 67% with the final last thing remaining is the bat on that authenticator. And we are golden. Now, let's go ahead and launch battle.net. And we are going to log in as our account.
Once we get logged into that, I'm going to go into the control panel and I am going to go to user accounts and the Warzone hacker doesn't have an image. I'm going to browse for one. I'm going to go into my C drive, my build folder where I keep my stuff, my hacking stuff and the Warzone hacker logo. There we go. Sexy. All right. So that's done. So now Every time I do that, there's my little guy right there. Woohoo! All right, we're going to go ahead now. Let's see. Ooh, the patch. That's right. They did a huge update yesterday. Global friends list from Europe and Asia. Yes. All right. Doesn't matter to me. All right, we have to locate the game. The game is currently installed there. That is totally true. We are going to go ahead and say OK to all of these. Warzone, make sure we check our region. We're going to hit update because I believe it has to do a minor update. I don't think this one is major, but I believe it is minor. The game itself has already been updated, but because we cleaned it <clears throat> and we deleted a bunch of stuff, uh, now the, um, the game needs a quick update. So about 300 megs, and uh, on this connection, that should happen relatively quickly as we do have a one gig connection to the internets. We got the big one, the big one. There we go, 292, and we're ready. Okay, cool, awesome. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump in, check our box, hit continue, and we are off to the races. Back in the game in a matter of minutes. We're going to let our game load. And you're going to find that when the game loads, again, go through and check all your settings. You know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's defaulted. Um, right now, it actually popped up on a different screen. It's on a different monitor. <clears throat> I'm going to have to rearrange uh, that and pull it back down here. It's going to be really loud because I haven't had a chance yet to adjust any of the audio settings. So just bear with me for a minute while I make those adjustments. Yeah, yeah. number two let's go here we go jesus <clears throat> all right so i have two radeon xt 5500s the first radeon card does the top two displays that you saw the the bottom one because it's mounted higher in the rat in the in the cage um it gets better air circulation it's cooler so i use this one for the bottom three <clears throat> uh because they're number one there's three of them and number two this is where i do all the gaming so um i use this card here all right, so let's jump in. Controller, uh, first of all, let's kill this audio. Let's get this music volume. Oi, let's get the music volume shut up. There you go, shut up. Let's bring this down to, uh, let's bring that down to about a third. So let's just do 33 there. Uh, dialogue volume, we'll leave that at 50. Sound effects volume, we'll say 75. Okay, now. Controller settings. One of the things you'll want to do is adjust these as quickly as you do get back into the game. Uh, let's turn these up because we do have a freshy account. And audio, that's pretty much done. Yeah, push to talk and uh, stealth comms. All right, here's something you'll always need to go back and change, right? Get here, click advanced. There's my 1920 by 1080. I know that's the correct display. So this has to go to 100%, okay? I could go larger, but uh, the reality is it, I don't know if I necessarily get any benefit of that. Maybe I would if I 
stretched it across three screens, but that would be hard to, I guess, work with. Uh, we are going to turn, we got plenty of room left, so we're going to turn most of this stuff up. Uh, Tesselization all, extra, enable sun shadows, spots, particle lighting, ambient occlusion, and spatial reflection. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Filmic SMAA T2X, depth of field off, film grain to a zero. We'll go ahead and apply those changes. Perfect and done. And for general, we're going to be going controller, field of view, 120%, brightness 52, minimap square. Uh, we want the profanity filter disabled. And we will include some of these figures. And that is that. Okay. Into Warzone. Let's burn through training really quick. I have found that in some rare instances, if I'm loading cheats, sometimes it gets stuck on that screen. Um, but I found that just kind of loading in and going through training and then loading your cheats afterwards uh, seems to work a little better. So now we can just back up and get out of training. And there we are. There we have it. We're back in the game. Um, once we're here, we're going to go ahead and load our cheats. Uh, you can take a look at CPU performance. Uh, it's pretty heavy. Uh, memory utilization is still good. Uh, hard drive usage is good, although this drive does have. Uh, it's a hybrid hard drive, so it has part of it is flash, part of it is solid state. Uh, and you can see my, my GPU 1 and 2 are running uh, pretty well. So we're okay so far. We've got plenty of room left there. I'll move this out of the way for a moment. All right, we're going to head back into our build folder. We're going to go back into GG. We're going to open up our golden gun. I'm going to pop open my license on a different screen. We're going to take a copy of that, and we're going to run as administrator. Again, same issue as before, same question. Unknown publisher, Windows freaks out when it doesn't have a digitally signed copy. We're just, we know what this is. We know where it came from. We're safe. Run anyway. Uh, this is going to pull up Golden Gun. It's going to download the most current update after the last uh, update from Game Provider. We're going to head and insert our key, and off we go. All right, perfect. I have found better results when I allow it to count down fully before closing the window. Um, I have found it does, uh, on occasion, seem to work a little better. Could just be me. Uh, you know, somebody share in the comments if I'm crazy, but, you know, could just be my experience weird. You know, I've got everybody's devices and configurations are, you know, um, unique and sometimes function slightly differently than others. Uh, we will close up a bunch of these screens over there. We'll monitor some performance and we're going to wait here for a moment until we get the, the pause that we normally get uh, right before injection. You will notice that uh, performance on the CPU is now leveled off. It's pretty steady. Memory utilization is very steady. Disk drive usage is negligible, if any at all. Uh, here comes our injection. Now, <clears throat> uh, Golden Gun does use um, and run sort of like as the task manager. Um, so you will although see the task manager open in the background. If you have it open, that's kind of a giveaway of when you know injection's about to take place. Uh, so there we go. Uh, injection. Check our loadouts. All of our settings are gone. All of our colors are gone. We're going to have to kind of redo the majority of this, which is totally fine. We're okay with it. Uh, da -da -da. So let's go into a, what is Clash? Large-scale team deathmatch in areas around Verdant. Okay. We've played that before. Resurgence, quads, and trios. They took up two spaces for that. They're just trying to fill space. 
All right, we're going to drop into a BR solo. We're going to get our, our very familiar 26 ping. Uh, that's what we typically get when we know our account is good. We're going to do the drop in. As soon as we hit the lobby, we're going to pull out. And then we're going to go into another match, go to drop in, and see if we get the same ping. We should. Hope we do. It's been 45 minutes. I hope it doesn't uh, screw us up. We'll see. This is normal, searching for a brand new player. Totally normal stuff here. Nothing to worry about. Take our golden gun, stick it in the middle. We'll stick it over here on the right-hand side while we do this. All right, so uh, let's see. Trigger bot, no. Rapid fire, no. Um, ESP, good, good. We'll leave the defaults. No snap lines. The aiming at you warnings are brand new. We'll do some loot ESP, uh, max range, we'll say, you know, within 50. Again, if you click control and then into the field with the mouse, you can actually type a number if you want to be very precise. Uh, for radar, we're going to do the advance and the triple. There's no, I don't care for the 2D radar. It's just not my thing. Um, whatever. Ooh, sexy buffet. For miscellaneous, we're going to do super sprint, reload. Um, because we are using a custom key, we're going to need to bind that. So for now, I'm just going to use weapon ADS. Um, the visual effects that you see right here, all this weird kind of stuff, that's my video card. That has nothing to do with Golden Gun or the game or anything. That's how my video card is processing it. It's ridiculous. It's something to do with Radeon drivers and only if you have two Radeon cards. It's really awkward. Um, as far as the miscellaneous goes, I will bind a key in a minute. We will work on our colors in a minute. I will save this to... Uh, we will get our legit settings and save them there. And call this legit we will then load semi-legit and load up the semi-legit and save it there okay and we will take our rage settings and save them there like this Okay, just like that. All right, so for the moment, we're going to put this away. All right, let's drop in so that it knows that we've actually entered the game. Let's go get a kill or something simple. box really whoa all right totally playable all right let's get out of here all right let's go ahead and leave the game Beautiful. Well done. All right. So now. There we go. 26. We're dropping back into game two without a problem. Let's go. There's no. Um, let's jump. Drop into a clash. 26. Perfect. 
So no problem on the second, third, and other games that, you know, after this. Creating that new user account is essential. It's key. It really is. If you don't do that process, then you're doing yourself a bit of a disservice. And again, like I said, for those that are new to the tool for cleaning a workstation and cleaning a gaming rig, just load up the load up the Golden Gun Cleaner and just hit zero. Just let it do everything for you behind the scenes. Um, and it'll tell you at the end of that the username that it made and the password that it gave it. And then you can just write that down. And you can always change that stuff later. You can always rename an account and you can always change a password. You know, um, none of that is a problem. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish configuring my Golden Gun settings. And um, I'm going to drop into a trios. 26. I'm clean. I am clean. All right. Perfect. So that's how you clean a gaming rig once you've gotten yourself a hardware band. Takes a minute, but it is worth its weight in gold, and it does certainly work. I have to uh, reload my uh, read WASD. I've got to put my license back in it. I've got to, I believe, reload the, uh, nope, drivers on my pedals are still good. As you can see, it's putting stuff in, you know, putting those in. Um And I just got them in the wrong order, but <laughs> whatever. I'm going to fix it and clean this up, uh, and uh, then I'll be back, you know, in uh, another 10 or 15 minutes, you know, grab a drink and uh, sit down to play. All right, guys, that's it for this creative video. Uh, listen, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, we do appreciate the sub. Uh, completely never monetized, right? We do this for the fun of it, uh, not for the not for the, uh, not for the money. So if you enjoy what we're doing on the show here, put some support, some likes, and some comments, and we do respond as quickly as we can, generally to every inquiry. Uh, so again, we will uh, let you go with this one, and we will see you in the next one, if there is a next one. All right, guys.